Hello everybody, Liz here. Um, today is July 30th, 2020, in case you're watching this on the replay. And my son's birthday is tomorrow, the 31st. He's going to be 36 years old. So, uh, happy birthday, John. If you have, I know you're not watching this, but anyway, happy birthday. So, what we're going to make today is a little doily and fabric pumpkin. So, I bought these doilies. It comes two in a package at the Dollar Tree. And it was on a in one of the end caps over, kind of over by where the uh, placemats and stuff is. So, it's like this, and it comes two in a package. So, I've already made one pumpkin, and we're going to make one on the live. So, I'm just going to cut the tag off, because we don't need that. And then what you need is some material. And I just got this material. It's um, like a canvas material. I got it from um, Goodwill. And I think it originally came from Hobby Lobby. So, if you like this craft, feel free to do this. And I will be uploading my videos to YouTube. And they're in the video section of Liz's craft page. And I'm also putting them on Pinterest under Adorned by Liz. So we're going to lay our fabric flat. And then we're going to take our doily. We're going to lay it on top of the fabric with, um, you know, we just cut the tag off. So that part is laying down on top of the fabric. So we're just going to cut around the edges of the doily. Uh, with our scissors, we're cutting the material. And it doesn't matter if it's perfect or anything like that, but I would try to get it as close to the doily without cutting the doily as you can. to tell you that this in the crafting world we say sprinkle sprinkle the love so in case you don't know what sprinkle means I didn't know for a long time I'm like they're like sprinkle I'm like what is that but apparently there were scammers on Facebook and they were going around saying the word s-h-a-r-e and now Facebook doesn't like that word when other people say it and they think you're a spammer. So, we say sprinkle. So when you hear sprinkle, that's what it means. Okay, so I'm just going to put my material to the side. And what we have is our doily face side up, right side up on our material. Now this craft is going to take a little bit longer because we have to sew around the edges. Now you can do this with your machine and do a basting stitch. Um, for this video purposes though, and I did do this one by using um, the needle and thread. I did not use my machine. It was tempting though, very tempting. And then I'm using um, this hand quilting dual duty plus thread. It's a very strong thread, and then I double it over, so it's not going to break on me. Because you do have to pull it pretty hard, and if you get a weak thread, you're going to have to, uh, it'll break off, and then you'll have to keep doing it over and over. So I'm just getting a good amount, because you need to leave a tail. We'll be cutting a lot of this off, but to start out with, you do want a good bit. So, one, two, three. So, that's about three from my wrist to my elbow. So, if you want to measure for yourself. 
Hi Tracy, how are you? And then I'm just going to tie a knot in it in case it does go through my fabric. It'll stop and it won't pull through. We are making a doily and fabric pumpkin. So the doily came from Dollar Tree. There were two in a pack. And we're just doing a basting stitch around the edge um, with the doily and the piece of material that we have here. So when you first start out, you want to leave a pretty good tail. And I'll show you here in a minute. Okay, so I've just gathered up a few stitches there. And I'm going to leave about this much. That way if it starts to pull, it's not going to uh, pull all of it through. You want to be able to, when we get to the end, where the two pieces meet, the two threads meet, um, we want to be able to pull them tight and uh, tie a knot so they stay together. So again, I'm just doing a running stitch, basting stitch. And like I said, if you have a machine, you can do the basting stitch on your machine. See that? I just pulled my tail a little bit, so I'm going to pull it back out so I have a good bit there. And then I'm just going to continue around. You want to um, make sure you're getting your doily in there along with your material. And this video is going to take a little while due to uh, the sewing here. So this is uh, this is the most tedious part right here. But it does turn out cute, don't you think? So we have this little tag that says grateful. And then instead of using stuffing with this or fiber fill, we are going to use um, the plastic bags that you get at the store. That's what's in this one. Can you hear it a little bit? Anyway, it turns out just as cute and you're uh, repurposing something that you might normally throw away. I'm all for um, using something that would normally go into the, uh, the uh, oh, where they dump trash, it was on my my tip of my tongue a minute ago. Landfill. Landfill. So how's everybody today? Seems to already be hot here. I guess it was um, up in the hundreds or whatever. The low hundreds yesterday because of the humidity or whatever. Whew. I'm ready for a little cooler weather. Weather. I know when uh, it's cool we ask for hot weather and when it's hot we ask for cooler weather, but I guess that's just the nature of it. So we're gonna go all the way around to where we started. And then we're going to gather this up, and you will be using your glue gun, so. And then I just picked up these two sticks here when we were on our walk. Very light sticks. I don't know what they came off of, but they make wonderful pumpkin stumps, stems. Hey Lisa, how are you? Uh, Lisa saying we are in the south it stays hot and humid humid that is right Whew. you are right 
So I'm just basting this doily from the Dollar Tree, you get two in a pack, to this material that I got from Goodwill. And actually it's a canvas material that actually came from uh, Hobby Lobby. I don't know how long ago or anything like that because you never know how old something is by the time it gets to the Goodwill store. But you can use any material that you want in whatever colors you want. Okay, so we're about halfway there. And then I'm just um, taking my doily. If it's, uh, see how it's getting away from the edge there? When I sew it in, I'm just putting it to the edge. And then I'm making sure that I am sewing the doily onto the material. And I am using these this uh, hand quilting thread. And then I doubled it over. Because you will be pulling it pretty hard. And you don't want it to break. Because then you'd have to start all over. And uh, we don't want that. Okay, I just stabbed myself. That hurt a little bit. Don't stab yourself. Okay, so we're from here to here. Just going to continue on. And like I said, we're going to be stuffing these with plastic bags. And most of my bags are ones that came from the Dollar Tree, so that tells you that I do a lot of shopping at the Dollar Tree. It is one of my favorite stores. That and Hobby Lobby. We have a Michaels in Temple, but I don't seem to be able to find too much in Michaels. Now, since my thread is getting a little short, I'm just going to go ahead and gather up some of this here so that my thread will be a little bit longer for me to work with. But we're almost around to where we started. And again, I'm just like this. So, um, to make the pumpkin, you use the doily, so that was 50 cents, and then you have a piece of material the size of the doily, so whatever that cost you, and then the bags are pretty much free because you get them when you go shopping, and then the stick I got when we were walking in the neighborhood, so that was free, and then... I have some raffia that I got at Goodwill for a dollar, but I've used it on several projects. So, uh, and then I have a button here. And then, of course, you have your glue, the tag, and uh, your stencil and um, chalk paste. So really, depending on how often you use your stencil and your chalk paste and all of that, this could cost you less than a dollar. Okay, so this is where we started. This is where we're ending it, and I'm just going to do one more stitch. And it doesn't matter if it uh, kind of gathers up on you while you're stitching it. That's okay. So, I'm just going to start pulling it, and I'll pull it from both ends. And then you want it so that your doily is on the outside. Okay. And then you want to try to pull it as, well, maybe not as tight as you can because you're going to have to stuff it. 
but it's not going to go all the way closed. We'll have to fix that once we get it stuffed and put our um, put our stick in there. Okay, so this is what we have. Be careful not to stab yourself with the the uh, needle, and we're going to stuff it. So, like I said, I have all these bags of Dollar Tree from the Dollar Tree, and I went ahead and turned them wrong side out. So you wouldn't see the uh, logo as much. And you want to put them in the bottom first. The bottom bag, the bottom part of the bag in first. That way, if there's any air in the bag, as you're putting it in, it will escape. Because if you put that top part in first where the handles are, and there's air, it's probably going to stay in there. So I'm just stuffing the bags in our pumpkin. And once I get uh, several in there, then I will probably tie it up so it will stay tied. It will it'll stay in the shape that we want it to be. Okay. So let's see what we have here. So I'm going to pull up this one. Well, this one now I'm just going to do the first part of a knot like if you're starting to tie your shoe and then I'm going to pull it and I'm going to try to pull it as tight as I can and like I said it's not going to go it's not going to completely close or anything like that and we don't really want it to because we're still going to be stuffing it so this will use up quite a few of your uh, bags. Okay, so I slip knotted that twice and then I'm just going to do it again. Only I'm going to put that in there twice and that's called a surgeon's knot actually. And then I'm going to pull that and then I'm going to cut this off. So I just cut my string off, my thread. Now what we're going to do is we're going to continue stuffing. Can you see? Okay, so we're just going to stuff, stuff, stuff. And like I said, put the bottoms in first. And actually, I think this is a little easier than um, using stuffing. And it's just a real good way to get rid of those bags that you have laying around. Because I don't know about you, but I mean, we save them and we use them in our uh, trash cans that are in our um, bathrooms. We use them for it to empty the kitty litter box. I mean, we use as many as we can, but there's just so many of them. And this is just a good way to use up a bit more. Okay, so can you see this? And then you just want to shape it up a little bit. And I think right here is going to need another bag. Oh no, I didn't. Aww. Look what happened. Aww, this is terrible. I can't believe this. Now I have to start over. Are you guys laughing at me? Oh my gosh. This is so terrible. I can't believe this happened. Oh my goodness. Now I have to start over. I don't even know where my needle is. Oh, here it is. Oh, this is so horrible. Okay, I'm going to tie my two ends here together in a knot. Then I'm going to have to find the other end. Oh, my goodness. 
this just did not happen. I can't believe this. I thought this stuff was so strong that there's no way it would have broke. I guess I was just working it too much. Oh my goodness. Okay. Somehow I gotta get this. Well, let me see. Where are you? Can't find the... Was the piece is that the piece that I knotted together? Okay. I think I got part of the doily in here or something. Something ain't right. Okay, let me just cut this. Guys, don't do what I do. Okay. Here's the other piece. Here's our piece that has the knot in it. So I'm just going to tie these two together and then I'll grab it on the other side. So, maybe I had it a little bit too tight. I'm going to try this again. It worked perfectly when I uh, made the other one. I was like, yeah, this will be an easy one. It will just take longer for me to do the, uh, the uh, threading. You know the basting stitch around the edges, but uh, yeah, I saw this as a uh, an easy project, and I didn't really see anything going wrong because I thought the thread I was using was good enough that there's no way it would break. But here we are live, and uh, yeah, it broke on me. I'm going to stop right here. And I tied this piece on here, so I'm going to cut this off right there and just tie a knot in it. Hope you guys are still with me. Okay. Now I'm going to pick up the other side and let's trim this up. It's very difficult to see the threads going in the eye of the needle. Jeez, since I'm trying to do two pieces, I can't even get one of them in there. And I already licked it. Well, this is embarrassing. There, there I go. I got it. Okay. So I'm going to have to sew this backwards because I'm right handed. I 
cannot do that the other way. I did watch another crafter do this. this um, she's an older lady and she comes on at 9 o'clock at night. And the one she did, oh my goodness, I felt so sorry for her. Her thread broke about three times. And I just, I felt so bad. I was like, yeah, I know how it is to mess up when you're live. And she's like, well, you know, it worked perfectly when I did it. When she made her first one. And look at me. Look at me now. Doing the same thing. But you know what? We forage on. We're going to get her done. We are going to get her done. If it takes me all day, I'm going to get her done. Okay, so I'm almost to where we started the other piece. All right, we're there, we're there. Of course, a piece of my, oh jeez, my thread, a piece of it came out, my needle. Where is it? You know what, I'm just gonna go with, <laughs> just going with it. I'm just going to go ahead and tie this up. And I'm going to not get it so as tight as I can. And actually, it wasn't my knot that broke, it was the thread itself. However, this is old thread, so maybe that has something to do with it. I do not know. So, I have this extra here, the material. I'm just going to cut that off. Okay. So now we're going to get back to stuffing the bags in here. I'm going to try to be a little less aggressive. Hey Robert, how are you? So I'm just stuffing it from bags that we got at the store when we were buying stuff. Just a way to get rid of some trash you have laying around. Because I know everybody's got these bags. I know you do. Don't even say you don't. I know you do. We all do. Why do I feel like that's going to come loose again? So, when you're putting the bags in, like I said, make sure you put the bottom in first. That way, any air can escape. If you put the, the top in first, um, the air can escape out of it as you're putting it in. So, I'm just stuffing it with bags until it gets the size that I want it to be. don't want to overstuff it because I don't want my thread to break a second time. But we do need a little bit more right here. I'm going to put at least one more bag in there. Okay, you 
want your pumpkin to be full, but you don't want to overfill it. Okay, I think this is good. So I'm just squishing it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take our stick here that we found on a, a walk and we're going to put it down in there and we're going to hot glue it. So I'm going to put some hot glue around the bottom part and then I'm going to stick it right in the middle. Just like that. Get me another glue stick. I put a little glue on the end of the glue stick so that it'll stick to the, the one that's in there and then um, it won't keep falling out. Okay, so I'm going to put some glue around my stick and then I'm just going to take uh, the material and I'm just going to hold it up against the stick. probably want to use quite a bit of glue. I'm just holding it around there. You to make sure your bags are down in there and then you want what you want is your material against the uh, stick. So you want your material against it. Make sure your bags are down inside. And you have to hold it for a few seconds until it adheres. If you don't get it all in the first round, you can keep going around it. And then we're also going to use our twine, and that's going to help us put it all together, too. be easier if you put the glue all the way around the stick and then hold it all at once once you get it started. Now I'm going to try that. So I put it all around and then I'm just going to hold it all up against it. And I'm just holding it there. So how's everybody this morning? Feel free to S-H-A-R-E this video to anyone that you think would like to see it. Put it on your page. like to have it out there. Uh, the more you sprinkle the love, the more Facebook uh, thinks people like it. And hopefully you guys do. And uh, we'll keep putting it out there so more people can see it. So my glue is still just a little bit wet, so I'm going to hold it until it um, dries a little bit more. Okay, so this is what we have. And then I'm going to take my twine, and I just got this from the Dollar Tree. And actually... See how this is pulling loose a little bit? I am going to put a little bit more glue there and hold that. Hold 
hold it just a tad more. I can see that it wants to get loose. Okay, so I'm going to take my twine and I'm just going to um, put a little bit of glue around the bottom of my stick and I'm going to put my twine on there, the end of it. And then I'm just going to wrap it, wrap my twine around the bottom, around the bottom of the stem. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue, glue it down. Did I get, yeah, I got glue in there. So I'm just going to glue it down here, and then I'm going to take it. And I'm going to go around the bottom and then up to the other side. Once it's on the other side here, I'm going to put a dab of glue there. And that's just to hold it down in the place where I want it to be. And then we're going to continue to do that until we get probably, let, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, until we get it around four times, which laps the, uh, you'll have eight, eight sections around your pumpkin. And so you want to see where I have the um, twine, now I want to go halfway. So at the halfway point, I need to put another drop of glue there to hold my twine in place. And then I want to take it around the bottom and to the other side, and then I want to glue that down. And we're going to keep doing this until we get eight sections. So I'm going to turn it. Take it to this next section, glue it down, then I'm going to take it here, go all the way around to the other side, and then I'm going to glue it there. And it doesn't matter if that looks a little messy, as you can see, we're going to put our raffia on it. Okay, so now we want to go around right here. So we're going to put a dab of glue to hold that in place. And then we're going to go all the way around and to the other side. And we're going to glue that in place. I just think it gives it a little added dimension. You know, the pumpkins are kind of sectioned off a little bit. And then you can um, mess with this a little bit to get it right in the center there, like that. And then see how these two are real close and this is further apart, so you can just move this one here a little bit over. What do you guys think? And then I'm just going to wrap this a couple more times around. Well, okay, I say a couple, several times. And then I'm just going to cut it and put some glue there to hold it in place. And here we go. So this is what we have so far. And then you could play with it a little bit too. Fluff it up. Okay, so we have our raffia over here. And I need to get some of this glue out from under my fingers. Oh, Lisa says, very cute. Thank you, Lisa. So I'm just going to get my pieces of raffia. I think I have three, three or four pieces. I guess raffia uh, to me just kind of screams fall. I guess because it's kind of like um, straw 
or the things off of uh, the corn corn stalks. So I have four or five pieces and I'm going to fold it in half. And then I am going to just tie it. And you need to decide what part you want to be the front of your pumpkin. So find whatever part you think is the prettiest. And I want to say probably right there. So I'm just going to tie it off like I would a pair of shoes. And then to make it stay down, we'll, we will put glue in it. But for now, I just want to get it on here and then get my bow going. If I have enough, I might have to undo one of the pieces. I might have it folded too much, but no, nope, it looks good. So I'm just going to put some glue down in here. Just to hold that down. And then I'm going to trim this up. That one's way too long. That one's too long. Okay. And then I'm going to take this right here that I folded and I'm cutting that. There's some of it here on this side, but I don't know where it is. So, um, let me go ahead and glue this down right there. And then I'll cut some of this. I won't cut it all, but I'll cut some of it. Some there and some there. up a little bit. Okay guys, I have these buttons. Maybe I'll put all three of them on there. I don't know. That one's cute. Okay, yeah, I'm just going to put all three of them on there. This one in the middle. So I just kind of picked some buttons that were um, close in the color of um, my fabric here. I thought this one was really cute. So I'm going to put it on one side and put the other button on the other side. This is just a little, little button with a Thing on the back, which I'm going to put right there. Okay, I'm still going to trim this up a little bit because there's not much here on this side. Okay, so I got my buttons. What do you guys think? If you like it, can I see some hearts? Thumbs up. And uh, then what we're going to do is our tag. So we have this um, wooden tag. And I want to say that I got it from Dollar General. So it was in this pack here. You get eight pieces. They're three and a half by 1.62 inches. And uh, so I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to use this Robin's Egg from Folk Art. I'm going to paint the front, the back, and the sides. And you can see how old this paint is. See that? There's a string of it here. And that's old, old paint that's kind of dried in there. I guess I'm going to have to take the lid off. 
I think at this point in time you kind of have to use what you have because um, Hobby Lobby doesn't have much of a selection of paint nowadays. And I guess other stores are like that too. So I don't know if they're just not ordering it or if they can't get it or what. I'm not sure. But anyway, we're going to paint this, the whole tag, around the sides. And I did take a piece of sandpaper to it. So. We're just going to give it one quick coat. And then we'll dry it. Not afraid to get paint on me, on my fingers anyway. Okay, so here we have it, our robin's egg, painted all around, and I'm just going to dry it with my heat gun, and then we're going to stencil the word grateful on it. Be careful not to burn your fingers. Um, I see a little bit of this that needs a little extra paint, so I'm just going to put a little bit for my brush. And then I'll finish. Hey Shannon, how are you? We are just about finished with our pumpkin. This is the one I made yesterday to see how to do it. And this is the one that we made live. So uh, if you missed the beginning, of course you can always go back and um, watch the replay. Okay, so that seems to be dry. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my Magnolia Chalk Paste in Coal Black. And I did post the link in the description for this. And we're going to use our Family Subway Stencil. I've used this quite a bit, just using separate words. I've used the whole thing once, but I've used lots of these words. So it's very versatile, and it's in the 8 by 11 section. I did post the link to this in the description. Okay, so we're going to use the word grateful right here. And I'm just going to angle it a little bit. I don't have to fuzz this because it is not that sticky anymore. And I want to try to get most of the word on here. It's going to be close. Like you can see this one here. So let me just keep working on this until I get it where I want it. Okay, I think that's pretty good. It's going to cut off a little bit of the G, but I think that's okay. So I'm just pressing it on onto my tag. And I have my squeegee here, and this is the consistency you want for your paste. So I'm just going to get a little bit on my squeegee, and I'm just going to do the word grateful. So I'm just going to take the excess off and put it back in my pot. My lid back on. I do not have to spray any distilled water in this because it's nice and uh, the consistency that I want it. I'm going to put my uh, stencil face down in the water. Now you can see where we have a dot right there. 
after I dry that, I'm going to pick that off. And it should, it should come right off. Put that down. So I can get a little baby wipe here and wipe that dot off. it doesn't want to do it while I'm on live. Well, anyway, I'm going to take um, my brush and I'm going to go over that spot. There we go. There we go. We cleaned it up going to dry that a little bit because I don't want to smear it. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our twine and we're going to cut a piece off. I don't want too much because we want it to hang down from our uh, stem there. So, I have that. I have it folded in half. I'm taking the um, folded end of it, putting it through the grateful tag hole, and then I'm going to slide the end through the loop, just like that, and then I'm going to tie a knot in the end. And then we're going to trim it up. But let's make sure first it's going to hang where we want it to hang. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So we want to just trim this up. Well, since that one's on that side, let's put this one on this side. So here we have it. We have this one and this one. Let me tell you what, let's take this one and put it up under here like we have that one. Which one do you guys like better? Aw, thank you for the hearts. We have the darker blue and then we have um, the robin's egg colored one. Do you think this is something you might want to try? Well, I will be back here tomorrow with another craft. Oh, Lisa likes both of them. Thank you, Lisa. I like them too. I don't know which one I like best. I like them both. But um, I'm going to have something different tomorrow, something that I've never done before. And we're going to be using... Uh, faux succulents and then uh, a piece of lattice that I had out in the yard that that my husband used for the garden and uh, we're gonna use some some of those paint stir sticks the smaller ones so you'll need uh, two packs of those I think there's 12 in a pack and we're gonna use two packs but uh, the lattice and uh, the faux succulents and then we're going to use those uh, Yo Play yogurt glass jars um, it's the o o i u or or i i'm not sure we i guess is what it is i'm not sure but anyway we have um, those jars that we're going to put the succulents in so i just think it's going to be a fun project it's probably going to be a long project but uh, I just wanted to show you guys how you could uh, recycle some items and then do a wall hanging uh, for 
less than probably less than ten dollars so um, until tomorrow keep crafting bye